Hey guys, this is Shanu at InnoKinetic here to talk to you a bit about a controversial subject, and that is Lotus's EV strategy. If you go online, you can see a lot of haters, a lot of people suggesting that Colin Chapman is turning in his grave. And and so listen, I I think that Lotus have to adopt a strategy that is going to make them a viable company. So today in this video, I wanted to kind of talk to you about why are they doing this? How are they doing this? And then kind of give you my assessment, tell you what my opinion professionally and personally is on this strategy, right? So every video has, should start off with, with a story, right? That has something related to the subject that we're discussing. My story is revolving around the first EV that I drove, which was a Tesla Roadster. Most of you know that the Tesla Roadster was actually based on the 111 platform and that it was essentially a little Lotus Elise, but battery powered. Well, we had a client in Malibu that brought his car down here uh, for us to check out. Um, this was the early days when the car was first released. And we realized that uh, the range on it wasn't so great. So getting back was gonna be a problem, but that's a story for another day. Um, right now, let me tell you about my experience in driving the car around. Um, frankly, I was really impressed. Yes, it felt heavier than my Elise, but the sensation that I got driving a car with the top off, the wind, without any noise, but getting the sensation of speed, it, it reminded me of the first time I went sailing. So back in my college days, I was in the sailing club and, and sailed these little laser twos as well as Hobie Cat catamarans. And it, it brought me back to that first time, you know, it was just this wonderful feeling and sensation of speed without a bunch of racket coming from in front of you or behind you from an internal combustion engine. So I personally enjoyed it. Um, I, I, I can, you know, again, I felt that Tesla was, was like a sailboat, whereas my lease was like a speedboat. So horses for courses, right? Each one delivering a very, very interesting, fun experience. So having said that, you can see that I was in this frame of mind that the possibilities for EV certainly um, were there. Lotus, why did they have to get into this? Well, let's start with the, 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 the real simple and easy reason, right? They're mandated into it. The legislation from first world countries around the world are demanding, are requiring automotive manufacturers to stop selling internal, you know, uh, internal combustion engines by 2035. In fact, England had it as 2030, and this past week, their prime minister just actually walked that back to 2035. So they're being mandated to do this, right? And what's the other reason? Well, if any of you have been following Lotus for as long as I have and longer, you know for 75 years of their history, financially they have been in turmoil. So they need to come up with a strategy that delivers cars that have a bit more volume than just sports cars. It took Lotus almost 75 years to build a hunt and deliver 100,000 cars. You know, General Motors sneezes and out come 100,000 cars a day, right? You know, the, it, that, that number is so small for most manufacturers. So Lotus needed to find some financially viable way for them, right? They're shooting with this strategy of theirs for 150,000 cars per year by the year 2028, 50,000 of which they expect to um, export to North America. So that is not gonna happen with sports cars. So they're gonna have to come up with a different strategy, right? So what is their strategy? Well, they have been showing and revealing, which we've talked about in previous videos, multiple EVs, right? The, the um, Electra, which I actually just saw at a Lotus dealership in London this past week. In fact, I'll, I'll insert uh, my, my comments in later in the video. They had just unveiled the Emaya in New York a couple weeks ago, which is the sedan version of these cars, right? So they have a small crossover coming as well, and then sports cars, right? We had talked previously about the Lotus EV, or electric vehicle architecture, Leva, in a previous video. So that is how these things are rolling out. So how, you know, again, are they doing this? Well, part of it may be some platform sharing. As you guys know, Geely owned Volvo and Polestar. 
as well as a couple of other Chinese brands that we don't get here in the States. So there's technology sharing, there's platform sharing, and this is a strategy that has been employed by all the large manufacturers for decades, very, very cost effectively. And so Lotus now are with a family of manufacturers that can do exactly the same thing, which absolutely makes some sense, right? Look at what Porsche had to do. Many of you may or may not realize, but in the 90s, Porsche was on the financial ropes, okay? They introduced the Cayenne and then the Macan, and now what, what do we have? They have the cash flow, they have the financial wherewithal to produce all sorts of esoteric niche boutique cars like 911 ST, Safari Dakar, GT4 RS, all these cool cars, right? Thanks to the sales of four-door SUV crossovers. Lotus want to get in on that action themselves. So that's precisely how they plan to do this, right? So these hyper sedan, hyper SUV, the way they're positioning the Electra and Amaya is how they're going to do that. So let me just insert this video of me um, right at this time. Here I am in the Electra in London. And I'm now convinced that this is absolutely the right strategy for Lotus. We need Lotus to have models that are going to generate volume and cash flow. If we want the brand to exist for the long haul, producing sports cars, maybe again in the small volume that they had previously, then we need these kind of volume models. The Electra is really nice. I, I think that it's going to hit the right um, market. I think it's going to appeal to quite a few people. It is beautifully finished. It's got all the tech. Um, interior, again, is just fantastic. And I think they're going to sell a bunch of these. In fact, they'll probably sell more Electras than any other model they've ever sold previously. Much like Lamborghini with the Urus, I think the Electra is going to be very, very similar, uh, have a similar effect for, for, for Lotus. So anyhow, time will tell, but I'm behind this strategy and hope that uh, Lotus will be successful. So thank you. So what are my final thoughts on this whole strategy with these electric cars? Well, I, I kind of boil it down to like seven different points. The first being, well, look, we're, you know, the Eurozone is already starting to walk back on their EV requirements. Um, and, you know, Porsche are showing things like e-fuels and other things here. So, I, you know, look, I, this EV strategy makes some sense. You're going to see, you know, it's not going to be implemented as aggressively or as nor as, as quickly as governments would like. There's massive infrastructure challenges that they all have that are going to prevent this from being a reality that quickly. All right. Point two. Well, when you look at EVs, they actually deliver the performance that most people want in their day-to-day -day needs, right? Which is instant torque for fast acceleration from stoplight to stoplight. EVs deliver that in spades, right? Point three, well, you know, internal combustion engines, used ones, cars, I should say, that have ice, you know, power are gonna be available for a very, very long time for us enthusiasts. So, you know, we can continue to enjoy that type of vehicle because there's gonna be just plenty of them in the used market. Right. Point four. OK, this is something that I believe is going to make EVs more fun to drive in the future, and that is the ingenuity of engineers. OK, I am convinced that they will make these cars more and more fun to drive. You don't have to look that far back to realize when emissions affected cars and sports cars in particular. Think about the 70s and the 80s when the emissions requirements really strangle those internal combustion engines. Well, we figured that out and look at these cars that we have today. They are cleaner and faster than ever before. So I think the same thing will apply here with EV or whatever alternative power train or power plants will, will, will be put in place, right? And so that brings me to point six, which really, or, or five, I should say that, that there, there is enough room for different types of propulsion systems um, in sports cars and in cars. And so, you know, again, you can think of the diesel powered LMP cars that were winning at Le Mans in the late 90s, right? Diesel engines, whoever thinks of that in a sports car, yet here they are. And for 
specific reasons they were the favorable powertrain to 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 run okay so i think we may find other things beyond ev maybe hydrogen maybe e-fuels but i'm sure we're going to have some other things that will make sense lotus is moving down this strategy because they frankly need to right and to that point they've decided that their first offerings are going to be on the expensive side over a hundred thousand dollars right for the electro or the amaya and, and that's a smart strategy because it is so expensive to produce these EVs right now. The batteries are so expensive. And if you look at most of the manufacturers that are out there that are doing this, they've all started, they've entered the market with most of them with expensive product. And so the Porsche Taycan was very expensive. And that's the right strategy to try to skim some of the cream, the clients who don't, it's not about the money. They just want something special and they want an EV, capture those clients. And that's exactly what Lotus is doing. And that brings me to really probably the, the final point that I had that I think is kind of interesting about what Lotus is doing here. And that is their marketing strategy. If you look at some of the ads that they put out there for the Electra and for the the Amaya, very, very interesting stuff. And their, their slogan, unfollow the crowd. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's really in keeping with Lotus. Lotus has never been a car for the mainstream. And using that strategy and positioning their cars so that they are in fact different from the mainstream offerings, I think that's the right strategy on Lotus's part. So I'm a big supporter. I think that this is the right way for them forward. We know that producing sports cars and only sports cars has been 75 years of financial misery. So let's let's support them with this effort. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the Lotus brand will continue for another 75 years and beyond. So I hope you agree. If you don't, or if you do, comment down below. This is going to be a very, very interesting future for for all of us sports car enthusiasts. But I think that the EV change that is taking place is certainly fundamentally the biggest change that's happened in our lifetimes. But it's going to be an interesting one. And I'm glad to be sitting here having kind of a front you know, row seat to how the industry is managing all of this. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. We'll be back with some more sports car content next time. Thanks for watching.